Maybe we've got it all wrong. We've been told that the best car in the world is a sedan and we believe it. But what if it's an SUV? This is the all-new Range Rover and it's got enough improvements to everything to make it a viable contender. Can it though? Find out. The best car in the world is subjective, of course, but universally accepted criteria for the part are timeless design, luxurious interiors, space, and just intuitiveness. All things that the new Range Rover seems to have covered with a healthy side of go-anywhere abilities that elevates the whole proposition. Now, the Range Rover formula has always been a mix of understated elegance and utility and the new one, well, it looks a lot like the old one, doesn't it? But it's even cleaner and simpler. Does an SUV need pop-up door handles, a recessed window line sill liners, and hidden taillights? No, but it's sort of like a sculpture in a modern art museum, where when you spot the details and make it what it is, you go, how clever. When you climb into the Range Rover, and yes, you do have to climb into it even when it's at its access height, you're greeted by this wonderfully opulent cabin, which has even got leather up here. Now, this obviously competes with the Bentley Bentaygas of the world, not really the S classes. This is probably more like a Maybach. To that effect, you've got wood trim all over the cabin, lovely large swaths of leather, and there's a lot of bright, shiny trim. This especially does tend to reflect back into your eyes when you're driving on a sunny day. Now the screens have been upgraded. This is the latest version of PV Pro and it's absolutely the largest integration of Apple CarPlay I've ever seen. Now the cameras are very clear. You've got that 360 view that kicks in whenever you're in proximity of other objects that actually helps pilot this larger car. But the one thing that annoys me is that it's not the same color as the car you're driving and it's the same case with the car up here. Fortunately, though the screen is large, it doesn't have the climate controls on there. You've got separate controls for it. You've even got a separate control for your audio. Now, the gear shifter is also a wonderful shape and it's got this wonderfully tactile material right on the top of it. Now, to select drive modes, you've got your rotary dial right here. And the best thing about it is that if you push it in, you select auto. That last bit is just a small example of how easy to use and intuitive things are in the Range Rover. Space, even on this non-long wheelbase autobiography model, is limo rivaling. Setting a position on the plushly cushioned rear seats, even reclining them and accessing the excellent foot support, is more intuitive than some other German luxury sedans. There's seat ventilation and heating all around, and even the massage programs feel more gentle yet equally effective, once again, compared to the German sedans. With literally everything electric or powered though, long-term reliability could be a question. But for a deeper dive into other features, do check out our walk-around video of the new Range Rover. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the Overdrive channel if you like what you see. Often with cars in contention for that superlative title, you're dealing with a whole lot of real estate. With the Range Rover, you worry a little less about getting your real estate beached on a speed breaker, given the 219 to 295 mm of ground clearance, which is even more than a Defender. But you still have to pilot around a 5 meter long car on a 3 meter long wheelbase, which can make everyday tasks a chore. Now, the Range Rover is available with rear wheel steer for the first time ever. And the rear wheels steer up to 7.5 degrees, and that reduces the turning circle to just under 11 meters, just like hatchback territory. And where you'll really appreciate that is when you come to maybe your favorite drive through where I wouldn't have dared bring a Range Rover here before. And it would always be a kind of clench your teeth kind of moment. But yeah, you've got the cameras helping you out. And it's the easiest I've ever piloted a SUV this big through this particular drive-through. Now you also get the full range of engines in the new Range Rover in India. There are six-cylinder, three-liter petrol and diesel options which are available with mild hybrid tech. And there's a V8, a 4.4 liter, which unfortunately we're not driving today. We have the D350 with us, which puts out as much power as its name suggests and 700 Newton meters of torque. Now, all these powertrains 
are mated to an 8-speed automatic and it's the same automatic that we've experienced in the Defender and sometimes that automatic can be the chink in this lineup's armor. In this D350, it doesn't feel as pronounced because you've got so much torque to play with in a wider RPM range than the 2.0-litre petrol that we've driven in both Defender 110 and Defender 90. Under most circumstances, this is a part train that kind of just blends into the background and it's beautiful because there's torque whenever you want it and it sort of just rolls on and you glide across the road. It's a beautiful feeling. When you do ask for more, however, it takes a bit of time to deliver. And even then, the sound you hear from it, it's a very muted sound. So, so this drivetrain definitely is for people who just want to get the job done and not really know what they're driving. Now, coming to the engine itself, it's very, very refined. And like we said, it's often hard to tell whether you're driving a petrol or a diesel, which is obviously a very good thing. You can take control of this gearbox via the paddle shifters and they're lovely, solid pieces of aluminium that really make you want to shift yourself even if the drivetrain isn't the sportiest of feeling. Now, when you switch to dynamic mode, there's a beautiful change in the dials that greets a slightly more alert gearbox, but some of those qualms that we spoke about still apply. What I like about this drivetrain is that it doesn't seem over-eager to kind of shift up into the highest gear possible. So when you're driving around in the city, you do feel like you've always got power and torque in reserve. That little trait of the drivetrain also kind of helps mask the general laid-back nature of the gearbox. When you're cruising on the highways, when you realize the beauty of this part train, because you can be at 120 kmph and the engine's just ticking over at about 1500 rpm. That gives you a lot of confidence to really pull off overtakes. And again, when you put your foot down, you know it's there. A 0 to 100 kmph run in 6.9 seconds is pretty rapid for a diesel SUV that weighs 2.4 tons at the curb, while the average kickdown figures point to its small luxury orientation. Of course, you'd expect very high levels of comfort when you're talking this level of luxury, not necessarily performance and the new Range Rover delivers. Range Rover was also completely updated the suspension system. They've got new anti-roll bars in there, active anti-roll bars, and over the rough stuff, you barely feel it. That being said, you do feel some of the bumps at lower speeds, but then again, like most cars with air suspension, you have to be going in the right speed range for them to really, really work. And once you're on the highway, boy, it really does a great job of ironing out even the worst of surfaces. I also suspect that the engineers have tuned the suspension in a way to take care of a lot of that high frequency stuff. So, for example, on the highway, there's not much that really filters through into the cabin, except if you're traveling over an undulating road with a lot of small undulations, then that's something that you do feel perhaps a little more than you should. The Range Rover also uses GPS navigation to kind of set the car up for turns so that you don't really feel the lean. And considering how supple the ride is otherwise, it's definitely pitching in to do some of that hard work. That said, there is lean in corners, but this isn't likely to be an SUV that'll get pushed too often. At the speeds it'll be expected to take highway sweeping corners at, it decades physics quite well. If you were cross shopping within the Land Rover, Range Rover family, and you were looking at some of the lesser models in the range, well, the Range Rover kind of drives like those cars. They're, the family traits are there, but it just feels like a more polished experience. It's definitely worthy of the flagship tag. But is it worthy of being called the best car in the world? just for offering everything the luxury limousines do with the advantage of being able to handle the worst of our roads. The Range Rover certainly earns the tag. Oh, perhaps the best car in India? That's more fitting.